Now, I don't know if any of you saw earlier, if you saw a glimpse of it or anything, but if you want to look at any card without having to worry about, uh, you know, where to find it, if you go to inventory, go to my MLB players and go to the team where you saw the card. Because I saw Mickey Mantle, I wasn't sure how to get him. And then go to the flashbacks and legends. There he is right there. So he's a part of the season three XP reward path number two. So they came out with a second reward path. And this is my first time looking at all of this. And um, I did take a glimpse at the XP path, so we're going to go into that, but I have not seen anything else other than what's in the shop and on the XP path. So obviously we have Team Affinity. It's going to be great. If any of you have used Mickey Mantle in last year's game, it was the Commerce Comet in 2022. It was a collection, finest retro collection at the end of the year, so not a lot of people got to get it because they either stopped playing or they dropped off. All right. And then 21, I think it was a Team Affinity, like it was just a regular AL East Team Affinity pack which is awesome so everyone was able to use mickey mantle very easily and this year it's going to be the same thing as long as you play the entire xp path if you remember the first xp path for season three to get hank aaron was not that bad all right the first two xp paths were pretty long all right this one shouldn't be too bad uh 114 contact on the right it's a little less than uh i guess normal but this uh, it's a mickey mantle card he's incredible clutch 125 vision 93 and we can um we, we can say that his swing, I guess it's not for everybody, but if you, you know, if you get used to it, it's it's one of the best cards in the game. 76 steel is good enough and 94 speed. He usually only has like 50 something steel, so this is actually really good for him. And then he only has six quirks. I was expecting a little more for a Hall of Fame Mickey Mantle. Um, but let's get into the other Hall of Fame cards we saw on the XP path. There's a very good one with a very good swing that I think everybody should try out if they have not. And that is going to be... Stan Musial. So Stan the Man, uh, that was his card last year with the Incognito card, Stan the Man. Max Contact, great power for having Max Contact. And with his swing, the 125 Vision, you'll play with that on any difficulty. His PCI is going to be huge, almost to the point where it's like distracting. Clutch 125, Discipline 117. He'll be getting out of the way of those pitches inside. He's going to be so fun to use at the plate. You're going to have good at-bats with him. I don't really see how you can't. And... Uh, the fielding is pretty good for Stan Musial. He's usually like a lawn chair out in left field. That's his primary position, but 87 fielding's not bad. It doesn't work well with 62 speed, uh, 80 reaction. Let's hope that plays a little bit better than his previous cards. I think he'll be okay. With what we have already, you know, you can walk Art King Griffith Jr. Shohei Otani's not a bad right fielder or left fielder. Hank Aaron's not bad either. Kevin Kiermaier, that card is incredible. I would recommend trying it out. He's got a great swing. And is he is simply the best outfielder in this game, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. Stan Musial has like all the all the quirks. He Mickey Mantle, you saw only had six. Stan's got nine, ten. So that's uh, you know that's all you can ask for. Um, like I said, fielding pretty good. There's nothing bad about this card at all. He can even bunt a little. All right. And the only thing that's a deficit is the speed and stealing. But uh, this is going to be one of the best cards in the game too. Like like I said, this year. Um, I think it seems like they're trying to save players and retain more players getting back into it. we got Pedro Martinez right here. So this is the time of the year where they drop the best cards. Uh, if you use the 95 Pedro, it's okay. If you used Pedro last year, really good. Um, you got him from the collection pack uh, in the first season. So he was a great card. You had to choose between Chipper Jones, Pedro Martinez, and Babe Ruth. So it was a tough choice for a lot of people, but he was a great card. I'm, I'm sure this one will play similar. You can see it right there. Very good. Uh, on a card this good with the per nines, it, you can just ignore them because they're, they're good. They're plenty good. Go to the pitch control and pitch break. He's got break on 90 or above on every pitch. So it's going to be very hard to pick up. All this stuff's going to break really late. His control is incredible. 92 and above on every pitch for the pitch control. And the overall control is 96 with a walks per nine of 108. So this is like, this is almost like Roy Halladay level of a pitcher card for Pedro Martinez. Uh, it's, I think it's going to be right up there with him for best pitcher in the game. Mickey Mantle is at the end of the pack, um, end of the path at 350,000, so it's not that bad. It's the same as Hank Aaron. You really don't have to play that much to get it. I've done like maybe one moment, and we got here. So the AL East, so actually all the team affinity programs are the same as Chapter 1. You know, you got the moments. It's only one moment per division, I believe. 
Um, so that'll get you 10,000 XP. And then you got each team XP missions. And then you also have the showdown, which I would definitely recommend doing first or, you know, right after the moment. Uh, the conquest, it's, I think it's not optional. I think you do have to do the conquest. Sometimes they split it up by division or just side of the map. And it looks like this one is going to be east. So if we go into all the conquest maps, we will be able to tell. I think... Yeah, so you have, it's an overall Season 3, Chapter 2, Team Affinity. So it's just one map. That's, they made it so much easier than before. And you only have to play 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 games total. Um, at minimum, I should say. 6 games minimum against the CPU. That's really easy. So this, this made this so much easier. Uh, and if you haven't already, if you want to get the collection cards for Gary, you know, I would recommend doing maybe one or two other conquest modes to get more XP on those other programs. Then we have the special collection. So someone already has Mike Trout paralleled uh, one out of one, and someone else has him two out of two. His quirks, only four of them, but it's Mike Trout finest. If you played with the 30-30 club card last year, uh, I think one of the best cards I've ever used, one of my favorite cards at least. Great right-handed swing. And you can't say that a lot about a lot of players in this game. You know, it's always the lefties that have the smoothest swing. If there's any righties that have great swings in this game that you can actually... Uh, you know, delineate and, and point out. It's definitely Mike Trout is one of them. So contact, 125, 113, powers, 125, 110. I was expecting a little more power for both sides or maybe a little more contact, but this is, this is pretty typical for a top-notch Mike Trout card. Vision at 90. Might be a little bit tougher on Legend, but like I said, it's Mike Trout, and he's got good contact. Clutch, 125. Discipline, 125. Um, fielding looks great. Everything above 90, including Reaction and then 99 speed. So he'll be a good center fielder and and pretty much anywhere in the outfield. All right, and he's got 88 steel. So once you get that parallel level four or five, you know, he's over 90, he's going to be pretty good stealing bags too. So overall, great card. Um, then you got Cody Bellinger. I was hoping a little more out of this one. If you used his finest card last year or his monthly awards card last year, you know that that was uh, some a card in somebody's lineup for the entire year until they got to the finest card and switched over. Uh, I was expecting more contact. I think he had max contact on that finest card last year. And this is a retro finest, so I was expecting more. But it's 110, 103, very smooth swing and easy to use against lefty pitchers as well. If you're not typically good lefty-lefty, you still might be able to hit well with Cody Bellinger in your lineup. And his fielding is ridiculous. 85 speed to go along with it. Uh, you know, you can get that to 90 if you max out the parallel level. Only 42 steel. You can get to 40, um, 47, but... Still, like I said, it's it's one of those cards. It, it just falls in line with all those great cards that have great swings. So if the attributes are a little bit more down than we expect it, it's still going to play well, I bet. All right, 95 vision, 110 clutch. I was hoping the clutch would be more. Um, so yeah, not not the best Cody Bellinger card I've ever seen. But again, it's Cody Bellinger. Then you got Brian Dozier here. Um, I'm not really familiar with this card. I used him in BR. He's got a you know, great power, 93 vision to go along with it should be fine. And uh, yeah, only one position though, second base. I'm sure if you put him at third or short, it wouldn't be a crazy out of position penalty for him, but I'm not sure because his fielding is really good on this card. Mike Messina, there's been good Mike Messina cards. There's been really bad ones. I shouldn't say really bad, but there's been ones that just don't get the job done. You can kind of see him easily. I expect this one to be pretty good given that his pitch breaks are... All over 90 except for the cutter. His control looks really great at 117 walks per nine and 94 control. So I think it's I think it's gonna play well. Rob Dibble, so he's he's kind of sneaky sometimes. You know, the three pitch mix turns a lot of people away. It usually does for me. I think it's too predictable. I don't really feel comfortable pitching with a three pitch mix, uh, three pitch mix. But sometimes this you know uh, is an exception to the rule because there's been Rob Dibble cards that are just really hard to pick up. Um, whether it's the fastball slider or the cutter coming out of his hand, you just can't tell until it's too late sometimes. Pitch break, 90, 99 on the slider, and then 97 on the cutter. So I, I'm going to have to try it out. Can't really give you a, a big breakdown right now, but he's got outlier on the fastball, as usual. All right, you get another wild card slot. If you don't already have all four, you can't get any more than that, so I'm sure most people already have that. Uh, <laughs> Team Affinity. I'm not going to go through all these cards. But we're going to look at, um, you know, some of the ones that kind of stick out to me because uh, I think it's interesting. So Richie Sexton, a new legend this year, I'm pretty sure. I'm like 
99% confident he's new this year. All right, I've been playing for a while now pretty religiously, and uh, he didn't get a good card until now. He, I think he had a season one card that was okay. This one looks pretty good. I'm not really familiar with the swing, so I can't really uh, you know, dissect it any more than that. But contact only sitting at 100 and 102. Vision at 87. I'm really not sure how well this is going to play on Hall of Fame or Legend. Uh, but it's Richie Sexton. If you're a Brewers fan, you want to try him out, let me know in the comments. Joe Morgan. I've been waiting for another Joe Morgan card. And I want to flash back to MLB 21 when he had a great boss pack card. I'll flash up the, the old card on here just to show you. And we're going to go back to another 21 legend, a milestone, Luis Gonzalez, in a second. It was a home run club. It, it was incredible. But these cards, don't, don't let the power fool you. Don't let the stance fool you. He actually, believe it or not, can hit lefties well. I would not put him in the same ballpark as like a Mike Schmidt or Alan Trammell, those righties that stand directly on top of the plate that you just can't hit with because of that. I would not put him in the same ballpark. If you used Willie Mays, if you use Joe Torre, you know those guys kind of crouch over the plate a little bit more, but you can still hit with them. Uh, I would put Joe Morgan even above those guys. I think for a lefty, he's better. Steel and speed, maxed out. Fielding's pretty good. I, I, I would ask you to try him out before you knock this card. He's actually, I think he's going to be pretty good. I'm going to try him out. And if I don't do well with him, then, you know, I was wrong. But overall... Pretty good. I'm glad the vision's at 110. Um, I wish the bunt was a little bit more, but you know, not a lot of people play that way, so that's that's fine. It's gonna entice me not to play that way. He's gonna hit bombs for you though. Don't worry. The other one that stood out to me besides those two was this. I just want to see if this Mark McGuire. You, you really got to see what type of swing he has. They've given him a couple cards for the Cardinals and for the A's. I believe his Cardinals. Or no, I'm sorry. His Oakland Athletics swing is a little bit better, people would say. But I'm really not sure. I, I try to stay away from Mark McGuire at all costs. He's just not that not that good at all uh, in terms of his swing. It's going to be tough to use. But max power, 82 vision, max clutch and discipline, and the contact's okay. So I'm probably going to stay away from that one. Uh, what else do I want to see here? Mikey Shremsky is an interesting one for sure. So is James McCann. So is Kyle Friedland. Like These are all definitely... Um, Def, they're definitely going in a different direction, which is what they needed. They needed a refresh, but it is kind of exposing with SDS that they are running out of legends to kind of wow us with. You know what I mean? So Mikey Shremsky, he's got a decent swing. I remember using him in, I think, 2019. He had a finest card. Pretty cool card art with the glass shattering and all that. So the power is there, the context there, the vision is almost there. Clutch is there. Fielding's pretty good, 74 speed. I, this is like a Giants fan card, in my opinion. But I think if you if you like him, he does it for you. You know, you keep him in your lineup a little bit longer. Eric Gagne should have an outlier on the fastball. His curveball is super slow, if I remember correctly. 69 miles per hour. So, you know, you hit someone with that fastball, and then you hit them with the curveball. Um, it doesn't matter how long they wait. It feels like sometimes you're waiting forever, and you still swing early on that curveball. It's going to be pretty good. All right, we've seen Mike Cameron before, but it was always a White Sox card. He's pretty good. He's got a good swing. Uh, all the contacts and powers are similar to his other cards. I was hoping it'd be more, so this doesn't really pop out to me that much, but Mike Cameron, he does play well. He's got a smooth right-handed swing, I would say. One of the rare righties that you can say his swing is very good. Al Leader should be very good based on the cards we had before. Chase Utley, um, we've seen him before. I'm surprised the power on the left's not more. But the contact, clutch, and vision all look pretty good and look good enough to use on high difficulties, especially with all these quirks. And he's only going to be able to play second base. It's the only downfall. But plays it very well. 75 speed and 55 steal. Um, yeah, it's not bad. I, I think Chase Utley plays well no matter what. But there's so many good cards now. I don't see a lot of people using him the way they used him before. Andrew Benatendi's in here. I'll let you guys look at him on your own. But some new legends as well. Josh uh, Stalmont. Yeah, I'm honestly, I'm not familiar with this, this person at all. I, I won't hide it. <laughs> I I don't think I've ever heard of him, but, um, four pitch mix, fastball, sinker, curveball, slider. It's nothing crazy to look at. The control is not great compared to the other cards we've looked at, but he's got two outliers and it's the sinker and the fastball. We've seen that before. So it could play pretty well. 
Uh, the card would definitely be better with better walks per nine and control. But again, I think the two outliers make up for that. So he might be pretty good. And he's a relief pitcher. So it's easier to mix in relief pitchers in your bullpen. Um, you can take him out after, you know, the three three batters if you don't like him. Kyle Friedland. I mean, this is a guy we've all hammered on against the CPU, against the Rockies to get XP for whatever program we're going for. And he finally gets a good card. And I don't think anyone saw this coming. But he, he deserves it, I think. Um, he's had some decent years with the Rockies. So control and walks per nine uh, is not bad for this with the pitch mix. Uh, the control and velocity for all these and, and the break is kind of all over the place. So you got to be selective and probably have to pitch him a certain way. All right, but he's going to be a starting pitcher. All right, other than that, I think we've seen a lot of these a lot of these cards before. Joey Gallo, very low contact for this time of year and for high difficulties, horrible vision. Uh, I would stay away from that card, but he's got a great swing, so I don't know. People love him too. He's a fan favorite. Alfonso Soriano is the chase pack. We got Gregory Soto coming back. He had a 94 overall card that a lot of people used three years ago, and now he's got a 99. It should be pretty good with an outlier sinker. All right, we've seen Mike Napoli. We've seen Palmero um, earlier in the year. This is his first 99, I believe. All right, Eddie Murray's always a classic. This one looks pretty good, too. The vision's up on this one for him. Uh, Sean Green has a great swing. I will definitely be using a little bit of Sean Green. And there's a lot to go through here and a lot to look at. So we've seen a lot of these cards before. Um, James Paxton, solid, solid starting pitcher. So he should play, play well as, as well. Um, but in the shop, you got Luis Gonzalez. I mentioned that before. He is this $40,000 pack. If you want him, don't buy the pack. Just put a buy order in for like $45,000 because I think that's what he's going for right now. $46,000. Um, so it's, you know, if you really just want this card, and you don't want to try to make stubs off of buying this pack and getting lucky, just buy it from the market. All right. But he looks solid. He's got a really wide open stance. Uh, it's similar to Larry Walker, but Luis Gonzalez stands up a lot more. So if you used Larry Walker and you liked him, I think you will like Luis Gonzo a lot. All right. He doesn't play the field that well. So you either keep him left with a good center fielder to make up for it, or you put him at DH if you're not using, you know, someone like Babe Ruth at DH and pitching with him as well. All right, I think we have enough pitchers now. We can kind of phase out Babe Ruth just for a little bit if you want or put Babe Ruth at a different position because Babe actually plays the field pretty well still. Um, the other cards in the in the shop, nothing nothing really stood out to me. Even this uh, Alfonso Soriano as the chase pack. I've seen him so many times before. He's got good quirks. He's got He usually has good attributes. Uh, his swing is not for everybody. I don't really know if it's for me, but he doesn't have left field or secondary. Um, so he's got the infield positions except for first base. But for people who do like Alfonso, they'll probably try to buy this card or not. I, I don't think it's chase pack worthy, but it, it's still a decent card. All right. And then um, we've already had this Paul Motter in here. I'm not going to go over that. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. I, I'm excited. This is like very similar to what we saw in 2021 and 22. Right around the fall, like mid-October, they dropped these fall legends and it's incredible. So uh, the cards are amazing. They get everybody back into the game for a little bit. Um, I wish they did it sooner, but here we are. So the um, postseason programs, we should get more for the NLDS. They're kind of slacking on that, but there's no new programs for the cards that just dropped. It's all XP Path and Team Affinity and, and the shop cards that you can buy. All right, so let me know what you think in the comments. You guys are reminiscing about those years where we had these cards before. And let me know who your top three favorite cards out of this bunch are going to be just from looking at it on paper.